What is up everybody? I'm No Legs Given, and if you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably already know that I never skip ball. I never skip taking crystal ball, but I also very rarely wind up playing crystal ball on Skip the Time Skipper. Skip generally just has other things that he can do and doesn't spend that much time picking up early mage characters like Wizards Familiar and Spellweaver. And then by the time you would want to pick them up, you are way over leveled and thus don't need them. You can find other better characters. But this was kind of an interesting game where I wound up playing Skip Ball. Uh, so I wanted to showcase this one for you guys and a pretty nice start to get the game kicking, getting to pick up a bunch of Econ characters on Skip is pretty sweet. Start off with a Lucky, another Lucky, and an Ogre Princess. So this is pretty fantastic. I think this gets us off to a really, really good start and definitely allows me to take a few more chances, play a few more things a little bit sillier, and that's what winds up getting us us to this crazy crystal ball mage game. Not going to get the Ogre Princess Slay on that second turn there, but we are going to <coughs> be able to get a bunch of lucky triggers, which is pretty sweet. And going to take advantage of this shot by using Roll the Die to guaranteed hit on the Polywoggle. Next turn, we will be on 4.0. So it's probably a little bit of a long shot, but the rest of the lobby will be on 3.1. That's still somewhat reasonable for just a normal polywoggle to slay, and if it does, we'll grab a tier 5 character for free. So that seems pretty sweet to me. The rest of our board, not super powerful at the moment. Uh, we're just playing a bunch of these econ characters with the... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, pair of luckies and Ogre Princess still. The Wicked Witch ain't doing anything for us, so that is a little bit awkward. We are going to wind up taking a little bit more damage, but hopefully now we can start to take advantage of being overleveled and being skip and seeing what we can do with that. So some interesting options here. Uh, what I wind up doing is selling off the Mad Mim for the Blessing of Athena. I think one other thing I could have done is just sold the Wicked Witch instead, and I could have used that to potentially help Polywoggle and Ogre Princess get their slays in, but I also kind of wanted to play as many actual characters as possible, so that way I'm not losing too many life points, and I basically would have had to cut the Wicked Witch for the Mad Mim, and that potentially makes our board a little bit less strong, so... Uh, didn't want to go all in for that, but we're definitely a little bit stronger with the fact that uh, we have now added some level 4 characters to the board, and now we get to add a level 5 and now a level 6 character to the board. Polywoggle slays, and then we have a True Love's Kiss in our next shop, so that's going to give me a Doom Breath, which makes me pick up this River Wish Mermaid next, and... Still, so far, this has nothing to do with Crystal Ball, which, like I said, is why I generally don't wind up playing Crystal Ball on Skip. Doom Breath looks great, though. Doom Breath is awesome. That's going to really be able to scale. That's going to give us a ton of power, and that's what's going to then potentially allow us to get some sillier things going on. Uh, I do, like, I was planning on dropping below 20 health, so I am going to wind up picking up another Gingerbread Knight here, uh, but it is a little bit awkward that now I'm kind of strong, and thus I might not actually need the Gingerbread Knight. Two options in this shop, we could pick up the Lucky first, or we could pick up the End on Cindy first. I'm going to wind up going for that Lucky, and then we do wind up seeing Crystal Ball and Merlin's Hat. And while I do think that Merlin's Hat... I wouldn't think you're wrong if you go for the Hat here. That could even allow you to the end this turn. We could sell the Ogre Princess and the end our Cindy right now, grabbing a Tier 2 treasure if that's like Boots or Dragon's Nest. Both of those things would be really, really fantastic and probably set us up in a really powerful way to win the lobby. But 
what I'm thinking is next turn is 5.0, and we are enough ahead that I think we can greed out and actually just try to roll for Aeon here. And if we're able to do that, then I think we'll have a good chance to go into some Hatball shenanigans. And then we're going to pick up Big Book of Spells as our Tier 2 treasure, and that only affirms my decision that we are on the right path. I feed that Mad Mim that I flipped from the Unicorn over to the Kraken, and then I'm going to roll the... Uh, free roll here and uh, take a look. I do like the XP spell, but I think that we still have some time right now just to roll for Aeon, and I'm gonna kind of tunnel vision onto that now with a second treasure that kind of pushes me in that direction, feeling a little bit more confident that that is the way to go, and like I said, we didn't add anything to the board this turn, but the Doom Breath is carrying us. And that's all that we need that's going to allow me to greed out a little bit more. So that is what we are going for. And um, just, just grabbed an Apple Watch, by the way, so that I can uh, track my heart a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, you, you might see that in some future videos and stuff. Uh, we'll pick up Ogre Princess, and then I'll pick up a Baba Yaga works well with the River Wish Mermaid that we have, and then also works well with the Aeon once we get that. And then my third treasure is Forking Rod, and at this point I'm like, okay, well, this is definitely the strategy we're playing. This is what we're doing. Uh, we just have to um, find the rest of the, the puzzle pieces now. Uh, even though we are going to be level 6 next turn, I think it's still worth trying to find Aeon. Uh, because all of our treasures push us in that direction. So feeling pretty good about that, sitting at 25 health in the topper half of the lobby. And um, yeah, I mean, how can you how can you ignore these treasures? This is this is like it kind of makes me feel justified that like yes, crystal ball is a little bit silly, and I can recognize that it's a little bit silly, but I can also sometimes afford to get a little bit silly. That's okay. Uh, so Doom Breath is going to slay again. That's a really, really big Doom Breath for 4.2. Um, yeah, that's not even Doom Breath time. And then we do eventually wind up finding the Aeon. So now we're just going to cast as many spells as we possibly can, trying to pump her up. And we could grab a True Love's Kiss here. We're still sitting at 25 health, so what is Gingerbread Knight doing for us? Nothing, really. We will pick up a, um, uh, what was that? A Potion of Heroism. And then I go for the Genie's Wish. We get to double cast that thanks to Forking Rod. And then I'm going to go for a... Um, uh, Queen's Grace, I don't need to know the name of all of these spells, and I'll lock the shop and then cast a uh, Beauty's Influence. This is just like a test right now. I'm just testing my brain to see if I know all of the names of these spells, and uh, I do know most of them. Stone Skin, Drink Me Potion, Hermes, Magic Beans. We'll cast that, so that way Aeon gets that guaranteed first attack. Our spells will cost two less next turn. Do want to point out, I forget to lock the stone skin into the shop. I didn't relock it, so that is a little bit awkward. We won't get the full amount of stats that we should have been able to grab here, but we'll kick this turn off with a Drink Me Potion into a True Love's Kiss. That'll give us an upgraded Burn Beard, which I think sets us up pretty well, all things considered. Kind of do want to cast one of these It Was All a Dream spells, but we still have way too much cash. We've got 10 gold, and um, I'd like to cast some more spells, because that's what we're doing. So uh, we could pick up a Wizard's Familiar here. It does feel a little bit awkward. Like, it, the game, we're in the late game right now. We're level six already. Rest of the lobby might not be, but we are. Um, and then we also have the option if we sell off this Chupacabra to make another Aeon, which is pretty cool. And uh, now we've got both of those coming in nicely. And uh, I guess this is what I'll play here. I'll pick up another Hermes Magic Beans. And then I will just not play the Wizard's Familiar. Or I could backline the Wizard's Familiar. Hmm. Not sure what I actually like the most here and i'm not sure if i should lock on to that baba either but we're gonna have such cheap spells next turn 
but I don't think I want to spend five gold picking up a Baba Yaga. So I do think that this is correct. Our pumpkin is going to crack just in time for us to hit my... with a little bit of damage. Most of those upgraded evil characters did wind up dying, actually. I will feed one of these characters to the Kraken. Let's feed the Riverwish Mermaid. We're done with her. And then, I guess, like, I do want to replace this pumpkin and this Doom Breath eventually. A, a slot three Doom Breath isn't exactly the best. Uh, but for right now, I'm feeling pretty good about our position going to feed that um, white to the Kraken pretty quickly. Could have gone for the evil twin there, but again, spending five gold just to lose an Aeon isn't super great. We'll end up picking up a Boom Hilda, which is now a mage, so that's kind of cute, and then we'll cast a few more spells. Um, that's that's basically um, the rest of this game, I imagine, is just trying to cast as, as many spells as possible, right? Uh, we'll get a few more in here down to the wire, and then I'll just finish off the turn with a Kidnap and locking on to a Feed the Kraken, but both of these Aeons are gonna slay, so our spells are gonna cost four less this turn. At some point, it will get worth it to Evil Twin just because our spells are going to be so dang cheap. We also wind up stealing two Nine Sea Terrors, forgot that was about to happen, uh, so that's cool too. There are some True Love's Kiss targets. We get Evil Twin and it's cheaper than picking up an Aeon, so I go for it, and I'm just going to skip. I like the treasures that we have, and then I wind up buying, it, buying another Aeon. We're up against the Ghost. I do still want to potentially put one or two more characters onto this board, so I don't actually hate this play. And we get to make this second Aeon quite big before the turn's up, so I think that that kind of justifies it as well. We find another Doom Breath for ourselves, as well as an Ashwood Elm. Then I'll probably just finish off with this Genie's Wish. That is going to upgrade the Wizard's Familiar, and then it casts a Masquerade Ball. So we're all done for the turn, but 35 health now, sitting confidently and comfortably at the top of this lobby. I never skip ball, and this is why. Alternatively, I never skip ball, but I don't know, might have to start trying to do that a little bit more because uh, yeah, Skip is looking quite good as a mage character. Obviously, that more has to do with getting that early Doom Breath, which gave me so much flexibility and allowed me to roll for Aeons, but hey, I'm not going to be too upset by this ultimate end result here. We will briefly, very briefly, have an upgraded Scion of the Storm as our True Love Kiss rolls past that, but was looking good there for a second. I'm going to feed Echo Wood to the uh, Kraken because we actually have like more than enough upgraded characters here. I'm not really super worried about it. Then I'm going to grab two copies of Aeon because now our spells are so cheap that we can pick up Evil Twins and uh, they actually net us money, so pretty insane stuff. And now I'll throw Beauty's Influence onto Baba Yaga, and if we find another... Uh, evil Twin, then we can double Evil Twin the Baba Yaga, grab an upgrade on that. Uh, so that's cool as well. Still no trees, nothing to do for that. Probably could have just cast that, um, oh, what was the name of that spell? Uh, Pigamorph there to end the combat. But I wind up having enough gold that, uh, and cast enough spells generating even more gold that, yeah, that, that's the tricky thing with Forking Rod is like, you find one Feed the Kraken, and then you grab four gold out of that. So it gets pretty insane pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, we're kind of just destroying our opponents here. We do have to worry about this Medusa. That's going to take out one of our characters that we actually trade with it. So not a huge deal, all things considered. And we'll wind up finding the kill onto Wonder Waddle. And uh, yeah, I locked just for the Feed the Kraken because I was like, that's super big. And then I wind up feeding Doom Breath to the Kraken. We've had enough out of our Doom Breath here. I think that um, we can probably let it go. I'm going to <coughs> wind up uh, sending my Wizards Familiar up the chain, and we get that to turn into a Chupacabra. I'm also going to go ahead and throw Pumpkin into a Croc. That seems pretty good. And like I said, we have so much cash. We're above 12 gold right now, and we keep finding these Feed the Kraken. So just keep casting them. I'm going to pick up something so that I can sell it that actually generates you gold. I've got 17 gold right now for the turn. There's no way I'm going to be able to spend it all. We do get our Wizards Familiar all the way up 
the chain and then I do find a sign of the storm. So we did some pretty good stuff here on the last possible moments of this combat. Both of our Aeons going to slay again. I mean, yeah, this is all just like really fantastic. I don't even have room for the Science of the Storm. And like I said, I should have evil twinned on the Baba Yaga rather than evil twinning on the Aeon again. Though I will say the Aeons are pumping our mages that we have in here. Once I upgrade the Scion of the Storm, I kind of have to put it in. Uh, so we will find the room for that. And then there is the opportunity to pick up another Scion of the Storm. It's about the same size as this uh, Ashwood Elm though, so not gonna worry about it. It has more health, but a whole lot less attack, so I don't really care. Uh, and then I do wind up putting Scion of the Storm into the Kraken and finish off, finishing off the turn with a double Pagomorph, and I'll potentially lock on to this Wizard's Test as well, or Merlin's Test as well. Um, it's not gonna matter. We're absolutely huge. We're up to 39 health, and we're about to double Pigo with an absolutely massive board right now. So yeah, definitely feeling pretty good about this one. There was a point where we were almost going to be a Gingerbread Knight gamer, and now we almost have full health. So a huge turnaround there. We pick a morph their good boy as well as one of their support characters. So yeah, um, that's it. That's all she wrote. This was a, a pretty dominating performance. Uh, so definitely had to show it off a pretty sweet one. That is going to be it for me though today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no luck's given. Peace.